So Martin Bacoli sits the real big baby, Jared Anderson, on his bum several times en route to securing a fifth round knockout victory. This was a little bit of a show stealer in my opinion. A very entertaining fight, a very dramatic fight, uh, just action packed from the opening bell. Uh, I imagine most of you guys have seen this fight. Uh, obviously it didn't last very long. And I think this is one of the results that people were really waiting for. Uh, for a number of reasons but uh, just to run through the fight and give you my impression of it before kind of uh, dissecting it I thought that Jared Anderson looked very impressive in the first round particularly when he switched southpaw his active guard was flowing nicely he looked very alert without being anxious and I think his, his work was very accurate and he was working well uh, to get around the uh, left hand of Bacoli because Bacoli kind of has this long languid style where he has a low left hand and he uses it to to flick the jab out sometimes as a power shot sometimes more of a probing uh, jab and I just felt Anderson when, as soon as he turned southpaw he got into a, a nice rhythm he's a very natural switch hitter I feel um, and yeah he was just using that stance to, to work around the lead hand of Bacoli, landing his own jab, landing his own left hand to, to head and body, but particularly the body. He really couldn't miss with the body shots. Uh, and Bacoli was just a bit too stationary, but I think it was a deliberate thing by Bacoli. I think he, he wanted to stay in front of Jared Anderson because he seemed there was a patience about Bacoli and he was very relaxed and he was throwing out these little little feints, little movements, just to gauge how Jared Anderson would react. And for my money, Jared Anderson was reacting quite well because he was getting off plenty of his own offense. But I think Bacoli realized in the first round that he'd have a bit more success if he started to loop the, the left hand around the side and rather than straight down the middle with a straight jab. And he actually used that, uh, he timed a, a left hook, which I don't know if it landed 100% flush, but it definitely uh, got Anderson's attention. And then he actually uh, used that same arm just to just to shoulder a bit of space, get some control on Anderson, follows through with this laser right uppercut, which drops Anderson. And um, yeah, he was, uh, he, he, that was a shocker. That really was a shocker. For the record, I didn't pick Bacoli to win this fight. I thought he would have a good chance to. Um, but I thought Anderson with his youth, with his athleticism, with how dynamic he is and how creative he can be, I thought eventually after a competitive fight, he'd probably, he'd hurt Bacoli maybe later on in the fight. And then he'd probably, uh, use his superior work rate and gas tank. Cause that's something we've seen from Anderson to probably force a referee stoppage, but, um, no such luck. Uh, it was really just... Martin McCauley seemed like he was in cruise control, but was just able to inflict so much damage on Jared Anderson. Obviously dropped him several times because after that, after he landed that right uppercut, he just followed up with a couple more shots. And whenever he landed flush, that's it. Anderson's legs were gone. Um, there were there was a, a kind of a spree in the second, the third round where there were actually some very good exchanges. I don't know whether... Jared Anderson was not numb to the power, but because he had already tasted it, he maybe decided to roll the dice and see if he could take it, which I don't know, that's probably a questionable thing to do because he was getting tagged a lot in the second round. And I think the theme of this fight, just to jump ahead slightly, was that Jared Anderson was just staying in front of Martin McCauley for way too long. And I know a lot of people are going to say Jared Anderson was exposed. And I think to some degree, I, I, I agree because this was someone who many people were talking about being the heir apparent to the heavyweight throne, you know, fronting the next uh, generation of, of young heavyweights. I was never sold on Anderson. I saw him as a great athlete, very talented, but something's just missing. And I spoke about this in the live stream for me, more than anything, obviously there are technical limitations, defensive limitations, but Anderson, it seemed like his, in his mentality, in his psyche, something was just missing. 
Um, you know, seeing him crying in that little media piece he did with Roy Jones, saying the kind of stuff he was saying about retiring by the time he's 27, that stuff just didn't fill me with any confidence. And he's coming from, you know, young people these days, they have a very different mindset from the fighters of yesteryear. Even if you look at, I know it's not necessarily a different generation of of a person, but different gen the next the the current generation of heavyweights at the top. You know, your Anthony Joshua's, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. They're of a certain generation, and they have a certain mindset. Um, whereas these younger guys, I don't know. The jury's still out for me, and jury's still out uh, for me regarding Jared Anderson too. However, credit where it's due, he showed a lot of heart, I think, and a lot of spite, uh, fighting spirit. And obviously it was in a losing effort. He lost this fight. Can't really question that. But the way he came back in the, the second and the third round, the the amount of effort he put into his attacks to try and stay competitive with Bacoli. And even though he'd never hurt Bacoli, he was there, you know, he was still trying to claw his way back into the fight and showed a lot of ability. I think given the context of him being dropped so heavily in the first round with relative ease, because um, it seemed like Bacoli wasn't even really going through the gears, I think that shows a lot of heart from Jared Anderson. So we're going to have to see what happens next. But in that instance, in a losing effort, I think Jared Anderson can, can be proud of himself because he didn't capitulate. He got knocked down, he got up, and then the next few rounds, as I say, the second and the third... He's shown that really creative offense, that that dexterity, the combination punching. The only thing is, though, it wasn't having any effect on Martin Bacoli. And I think that's probably a combination of Bacoli being quite tough physically, but also maybe Jared Anderson isn't that big a puncher. Uh, you certainly don't want to leave your chin out to dry out in front of him, but I, I don't think he's going to be an elite heavyweight puncher. Um, and the third round in particular was just... Um, that was uh, 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 there was a good exchange to to finish that one. Both guys were landing heavy lever, and there were points where Martin Bacoli was just seemingly content to take the punches of Jared Anderson. Once again, maybe displaying a questionable power on Anderson's behalf. But then, of course, the fifth round comes about, and it seems like a fairly innocuous left hand, left uppercut drops Anderson, buckles his legs. Uh, I think he was kind of hanging outside the ropes at one point and uh, another series of right hands does the same and then he rises to his feet again there were two knockdowns in the fifth round and then a series of follow-up shots forces the referee to jump in you can see uh, Jared Anderson visibly frustrated but I don't think he was frustrated at the stoppage I think it was more so that he let the fight get stopped because he it just seemed like whenever Bacoli landed flush and he didn't even have to put that much effort into the shots, that was it. Anderson's legs had gone. So I think there's definitely some question marks there regarding his punch resistance. There's always been question marks there regarding his defensive ability. But, you know, I'm not going to come down on Jared Anderson like a ton of bricks because I think he didn't disgrace himself. Let's be real, this was a this was a step up for him. He's uh, very green. You know, he's captured a, a couple of decent wins, but no against no one the level of Bacoli. So the, he did roll the dice here. Um, and I think even in a losing effort, I, I think he's done himself proud. He's still displayed a hell of a lot of ability. And he's still displayed a lot of heart. But nevertheless, this is going to be the kind of fight that really exposes his weaknesses and what he's going to have to work on if he has any ambition to to pursue boxing seriously because as I say he's spoken quite candidly about not being interested in it saying it feels like a job uh, crying at the thought of having the pressure and the expectation on him saying he wants to retire by the age of 27 even though he's only 24 now and he's only just getting started so look He's got to figure out what he wants to do and, and then pursue it. But I'm, as I say, I'm not going to rag on Anderson too much because I think there was plenty there to give him credit for and to like. He was just in against a guy who was more experienced, more mature as a man and a fighter. And um, 
yeah, it was Martin McCauley all the way. Uh, Martin McCauley seems to be coming into his own quite a bit now. His uh, reputation was kind of exceeding him for a while. He was the king of sparring. And this is, excuse me, it's going to go a long way in kind of uh, him realising that a reputation in a professional boxing ring and not a sparring session. So, yeah, Martin McCauley looks like a very dangerous man. Um, looks like he's kind of found his groove in terms of weight because uh, it was slightly concerning when he was getting up there. I think he was uh, in the 290s against Carlos Takam, whereas here was he about 10 pounds less, 280 something. Um, but his his boxing flows, his power punch flows, it looks effortless and he's got a lot of creativity. There's some craft there too. The, that first uh, big uppercut that he landed in the first round, uh, that was... It was a simple sequence, but it was beautifully executed. The left hand, turn it into control. Just use the shoulder and the elbow a little bit to control Anderson's head. Line up the uh, the right uppercut. You can't ask for much more than that. And the power's there. He um, he has the creativity and he's not afraid to let his hands go, uh, at least in the, the recent performances. So, yeah, intriguing to see what Martin Bacoli does next. I think... What people have been calling for, from what I've seen, is uh, Bacoli versus Miller. Yeah, I say bring it on. It makes sense. You know, they were both fought on the same card. Bacoli obviously won in good fashion. Um, Jarrell Miller got a draw, but I think many people see him being the rightful winner. Um, should that fight go ahead, I'm firmly, firmly favouring Bacoli. I think he's a superior to Miller. I don't think Miller's going to be able to impose his kind of fight. I think Bacoli would probably be there in front of him, yes, but um, I don't. I think Bacoli's probably got the firepower. He's got the offense. He's got the punching power. He's probably got the work rate to um, to keep Jarrell Miller honest. And I wouldn't be surprised if he stopped Miller. To be fair, but um, hey, we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, onwards and upwards for Martin Bacoli. He's, as I say, be interesting to see what he does next. Also, same for Jared Anderson. He was someone who's talking about retiring early, even before this. So what's his mindset going to be now? I think he's still got plenty to give, as long as he wants to nurture his talent and um, probably, you know, uh, switch up his mindset. I think that's definitely necessary. But uh, I, can't, I can't deny uh, Anderson did impress me in spots there. I think he just got his tactics a little bit wrong. Uh, staying in front of Bacoli for too long too willing to uh, or maybe feeling obliged to uh, or obligated to to be in front of him and engage too much I feel like Anderson would have given himself a better chance if he used his mobility used his youth his athleticism his dexterity and tried to keep it a bit longer pick his spots a bit more wisely um, but hey it's a learning curve, so we'll see what Anderson decides to do. But for now, those are my thoughts. Leave yours in the comment section below. What did you make of the performances of both men? And uh, yeah, where would you like to see them go next? Leave it down below, and I'll get back to you for now. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you in the next video.